Hi, it's Ben. In this video, I'm going to quickly go over the common foods that eczema sufferers are allergic to, a few foods that nutritionists advise us not to eat, and the foods that we're left with, and then talk about different popular diets and how some eczema sufferers benefit from them. I'm also going to talk about how you can tailor a diet to your needs and how you know whether or not a diet plan is right for you. And I should say, you know, at the beginning that the difficulty with doing a video or doing research in this area is that perhaps I'm wrong, but there doesn't seem to be much scientific research in terms of which diets um, have a positive impact on um, managing the symptoms of eczema. The reason being is that it's difficult for scientific researchers to actually control a study of that nature because certain diets are quite difficult to adhere to in the long term. People waver, people stick to them to different levels and therefore the results are unreliable um, and it's also difficult to run the tests. So most of what I'm going to discuss in this video is based on anecdotes and um, my own personal experiences, but uh, a considerable amount of research that I've done and hopefully um, it should help you to identify a diet plan that will assist you in managing your symptoms of eczema. So firstly, just a quick overview of what was covered in the previous two videos. Firstly, uh, risky foods that eczema sufferers are commonly allergic to include soy products, products derived from wheat, including white bread, and in particular refined um, wheat such as pastries or crackers. Dairy products, in particular pasteurised cow's milk, nuts and seeds, and egg, either egg white or egg yolk. So, as I recommended in a previous video, eczema sufferers want to be wary of those foods and perhaps get an allergy test to see if they need to eliminate those from their diets completely or do an elimination diet. The other foods which nutritionists recommend are removed from our diets and which seem to aggravate the symptoms of eczema in many patients, not all, include, as I already mentioned, wheat-based foods, but also other grains, dairy products, to a greater or lesser extent, all junk, junk food with any additives, flavour enhancers or preservatives, iodized salt, uh, things like sweets with added sugar or soda drinks with added sugar, processed meats because they have um, chemicals in them, for example preservatives and also iodized salt, and also want to avoid any stimulants and drugs like alcohol, sugar, uh, sorry like alcohol, um, nicotine and caffeine. What that leaves us with is green vegetables, healthy sources of fats, uh, good quality sources of animal protein, root vegetables and fruits, and um, preferably low glycemic fruits, and depending on whether or not you tolerate them, um, whole grains. Now, um, I don't think that there is a single diet that's optimal for all eczema sufferers. I think that there are a lot of different di diets which ha can have benefits and it seems to depend on what the causes of the individual's eczema are, their, their uh, genetics, um, can, it seems to affect how a different diet plan or different ratios of macronutrients in the diet um, benefit or cause problems for an individual. Um, lifestyle. Um, development of allergies, which foods in particular you're allergic to, your medical history, um, it seems that the use of antibiotics can actually affect our allergies and also our sensitivity to foods, 
and any intolerances that you might have. So an intolerance is where you have digestion problems as a result of eating a certain food rather than um, an allergy which usually manifests as something like eczema or hives. So as you're sort of working out what diet might be suitable for you um, based on the foods that I mentioned already, you want to be sure that um, you can manage it in the long term and signs that you can manage it in the long term is that you feel full and last comfortably for a few hours after each meal, um, you're, you're energetic and you don't have uh, severe outbreaks of eczema or hives or dermatitis after eating, you feel clear and you have adequate energy and um, no digestion problems, you recover from exercise quickly, handle stress well and sleep well and you find it manageable so you don't want to be doing something that's so restrictive that you can't actually manage it and you end up going back to eating things like junk foods because you weren't getting enough food or you weren't able to stay on it. So you want to consider all of those and so it's about you know being easy on yourself and of course all of those points that I just mentioned can be affected by other areas, not just diet. So diet can, can influence them, but you know there could be a huge number of things that could influence those things I've just mentioned. And um, so, as 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 I mentioned already, if you've got a diet that contains healthy fats, animal proteins, or healthy sources of animal protein, green vegetables, roots, and some fruit fruits, and also whole grains then you've got a kind of a diet plan which you could use as a basic elimination diet and from there you can change that moderately um, in order to best fit your needs. So say, I'll give you a few examples of meals on that particular plan. Breakfast could be a muesli with some fruit and some almond milk. Lunch could be brown rice with some broccoli and some egg and dinner you could have some steamed white fish with cooked legumes and green vegetables so it's not necessarily that restrictive however a lot of eczema sufferers do have problems with grains so they may wish to move more towards a diet that restricts grains as well and that is basically the, the paleo primal diet I'm not an expert in the area but the idea is that we eat foods which our ancestors in the Paleolithic era would have eaten as hunter-gatherers, so animal proteins, um, vegetables that are foraged, fruits and healthy sources of fats. So that, that diet in particular does seem to benefit a lot of eczema sufferers and it's also a good one to use as a basis for an elimination diet because it does tend to uh, move out all the nasties. So if you're not sure about foods I'd recommend that you start with that and then introduce foods that you might be allergic to and see if you react and then take them out again. So an example of what you might eat on a paleolithic diet um, is something like a smoothie with kale or spinach, some hemp protein coconut milk and some avocado and maybe some berries for breakfast. Uh, lunch you could eat potato or um, egg with broccoli and some other salad. And then for dinner you could have some lamb, maybe stir fried with vegetables and um, some avocado or some coconut for the fats. And then for snacks during the day you could have berries or, or a moderate amount of nuts and seeds. So there's a lot you can do with that diet, and it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, restrictive. Another example of the same sort of diet is called the body ecology diet, and you might want to do some internet research on both the paleo and the body ecology diets and see if they help you to manage your symptoms of eczema. Now, some people have pro actually have problems with most carbohydrates, and they find, after going to the paleo diet, that if they change the ratio of mi micronutrients in their meals and eat more 
um, fats and proteins and less, less uh, carbohydrates, they benefit and their symptoms reduce. And so what you're basically going towards there is what's known as a low carbohydrate or ketogenic diet. And what happens on that diet is instead of using sugar as your main source of fuel for the body, your body um, produces glucose in the liver um, from the foods that, it's, that it digests. And then also it, it, it fuels the body using something called ketones, which are metabolized from the fats that you eat. It seems to benefit a lot of people, and that's the diet that I currently do. It can be very nutritious and filling, and um, at the moment, I, as I say, I don't have symptoms of eczema, um, even though in the past it was very severe. So it, that's been helpful to me, and it, it might help you. There are some common diets which, or popular diets, which fit in with that profile. So I already mentioned the ketogenic diet generally, but um, also the candida diet, and to, to a certain extent, the GAPS diet also kind of fit into this sort of area. So you get a sort of a moderate amount of animal protein, a high intake of natural fats from things like avocados, coconuts, um, coconut oil, butter if you're not sensitive to dairy, and f healthy fats from uh, animal protein like fish. And then you're having low carbohydrates, but green vegetables, ideally with each meal, and you're cutting out fruits. So an example of a meal plan on, on this particular diet might be, for breakfast you could still have the same smoothie as with the paleo, but you just remove the, the berries, or the low glycemic fruits. Alternatively, you could have eggs with some spinach. Uh, for lunch, you could have a chicken salad with avocado, dressed in, in coconut oil. And for dinner, you could have, say, steamed fish with some olives, um, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil and green vegetables and then for a snack you could have another smoothie or some chicken, chicken bone broth which is basically soup stock and yeah give it a go see if it helps. Now there are two other diets which are popular and which some eczema sufferers benefit from going on uh, some don't. Uh, firstly it's the vegan diet so it's basically the same as the first diet I described to you, except that you take out the animal protein. So you've got grains, you've got all vegetables, you've got fruits, um, nuts and seeds, and taking in account of the foods that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, which we need to eliminate, or at least be wary of. An example meal plan on the vegan uh, diet plan could be a breakfast of gluten-free muesli with some fruit and almond milk or gluten-free bread with honey and tomatoes. Um, a bit of a weird combination, you could probably think of something better than that. Uh, lunch, brown rice with some broccoli and black beans. Dinner, you could have something like some cooked legumes like kidney beans or a vegetable soup um, and some brown rice. And then snack on muesli bars or fruit, nuts and seeds throughout the day. And as I said, a lot of people benefit from that. And <clears throat> the vegan diet has been shown in a number of studies to be beneficial for a number of different diseases. Um, I haven't found any studies where it specifically is shown to be beneficial for eczema sufferers. I personally think that many of us need the fat-soluble vitamins which are available from animal proteins and the high quality source of proteins uh, available in animal proteins, particularly if we're sensitive to grains. Now, for example, me, I couldn't eat that diet because I don't digest grains well and they tend to give me eczema. Um, people with candida problems sometimes benefit from going vegan, but also sometimes their, their symptoms can continue or their eczema symptoms can continue even though they're on such a vegan diet. So if that um, sounds like something that would work for you and fits in with your sort of lifestyle and maybe your ethics, then, then look into it. And um, as I say, a lot of people do benefit from using the vegan diets. And then finally, the last one I'm going to mention is the low-fat raw vegan diet, which is called, uh, which is 
made popular by the book by uh, Douglas Graham um, called 801010. The theory being that the optimal diet for us is one that it um, contains 80% carbohydrates, mostly from raw fruit, 10% fats and 10% protein, all from raw vegan sources. So you're looking at fruits, salads, nuts and seeds, basically. I did that diet for, a, for three and a half years, and at first it, it had a miraculous impact. Um, I was able to come off using topical corticosteroid creams after using them for um, for over maybe 13 years or something like that. So, so it was very powerful for me. I think in the long term I didn't succeed because looking back I think that it wasn't, didn't have enough nutrition for my body. I needed more protein and however some people are very successful on that diet in the long term. It can be a difficult one to manage because the types of food that you're eating are so different from everyone else. But at the same time it can have um, great benefits and I, I also think that it's particularly good in the short term, maybe for one or two months, as a way to cleanse the body um, and re-establish good habits in terms of your eating. So it's something that I'd recommend. The prob another problem is that because a lot of eczema sufferers are sensitive to high amounts of fruit sugar, or sugar in general, the, the high amount of fruit actually exacerbates that problem. So I think that if you eliminate the foods I mentioned at the beginning of this video and in other videos, then you might not need to go as far as doing something like the raw vegan diet and will be happier on the paleo diet or like me on a low carb diet. So um, remember as well that when you start out on any diet for the first couple of weeks, just Put your, put your eating plans or whatever you eat during the day through chronometer.com to see that you're hitting all of the right amounts of um, minerals, vitamins, um, omega-3, omega-6 fats, carbs and proteins. Obviously the, the ratios will change depending on the diet that you're on. So some will be a higher carb like the vegan or raw vegan will be much higher carb whereas some will be lower carb like the ketogenic diet. So I hope that's helpful and that should give you some ideas and yeah, good luck with making the changes. If there's anything that I've missed or got wrong, let me know. If there's anything that you found helpful, um, I'd be pleased to, to hear from you. And thanks for watching and best of luck with managing a sentence.